paper. And then, yep, I got a few different questions for you before we begin. So um, first off, tell me a bit about yourself. How long have you been playing Overwatch for? All right, so uh, I've been playing Overwatch basically since season one of competitive play. Uh, I have two accounts. Um, back in the GOATS era, I ended up making it to about 37, 3,800. Mm -hmm. I was, I think, like I peaked in like third, like season seventeen, um, right. and ever since then I've just kind of done my placements on that account, and then nothing more. Uh -huh. uh, I ended up taking a break from the game. I deployed in two thousand seventeen, so I just didn't really do too much after that. Um, you know, far from maybe one or two games a month, if that. Uh -huh. And so, getting back into the game a couple of months ago. Uh, I created this account, the Jetic account, and I've been doing aim trainers and kind of basically getting to the point where I feel as though I should be at a higher rank, you know, All right. um, I'm able to keep up in, in, you know, my placement matches on my main account. I'm able to do, let's say, you know, the five DPS ones and I'll win mm. maybe three or four of those games. Um, and I think I'm sitting at like 34, 88 right now mm. on DPS, um, so I mean, tanking. I got tanking down. I I can easily I go into like the quick little games and get the free uh, uh, passes and stuff like that for a uh -huh. tank game. But DPS, I'm kind of lacking with. All right, sounds good with me. So you play the game pretty frequently, from what I understand, from what I saw on Fiverr. So you play that. You played a lot. I would assume, like you, let's say, like the past two weeks or so. How often would you say you play? Uh, the past two weeks or so, I would probably say I've clocked in maybe like 30 hours of All Overwatch. Right. So, I mean, it's it's something that I'll do after work and stuff like that for a couple mm. hours. But, you know, it's more or less just kind of like trying to get back into it. Okay. And then final question for you um, before we begin is do you have any questions for me? Nope, no questions right now. All right, so then to get on to the first topic, because I just kind of been looking through some of your, your, you know, your stuff on Fiverr and stuff you sent me um, that I'd probably like to go over before we even got into any of the gameplay is just some of your playtime habits. So first off, um, just taking a quote from like what you were talking about, you're saying like you, you know, you, you're playing games and you'll go like 15 and 0 one day and then zero and 15 the next day. Um, so one thing I would probably recommend for like just playing habits is don't play if you're losing 15 games straight, right? It's just usually a good, good advice. Good tip to go <laughs> for is just take a break. Um, you know, you can take usually a good recommendation is just anytime you lose more than like three games in a row just like take a 30 minute break or an hour or something like that if you're losing more after that break you might even want to just be done for the day kind of take a mental reset you can play some you know if you still want to play the game then you can play some quick play or you can you know um some so like sometimes what i'll recommend is like get a second account um which this is technically your second account but yes I mean, get a third yeah, account <laughs> get a third account right and play on play on that account that you don't really care about at all while you're playing terribly um that way basically you're not just hurting your sr because when typically when you're playing bad you're just gonna keep playing bad because you know that's just gonna form a negative cycle you you know you're you're losing games you get in bad mood your bad mood makes you lose games it's just gonna keep circling and then that's yeah. not really gonna be good for anyone that happens to the best of us right even you know playing at a top 500 level that still would happen if you're not really uh, approaching it the the kind of play time right so that's would be my first recommendation it's just kind of put limits on yourself for when you're playing and keep playing if you're winning maybe take some breaks if you're losing um then moving on to the second thing i was looking at was the aim training so you say you you aim train nearly every every night for like one to two hours and now yep um you said that you have like 30 hours like last two weeks how, how many hours a day would you say that is usually playing uh, that, that's, that is the playing. I do uh Kovac same trainer. So I do one to two hours of, co well, one, an hour and a half usually is the average of Kovac same trainer. Mm -hmm. Um, I also make YouTube videos and stuff like that. So I'm doing Aimer sevens Kovacs training guide. Uh, and I actually just completed the intermediate beginner. Okay. So I'm moving on through that and moving up the steps and stuff, which mm -hmm. it, it's definitely been helping, but I feel like it's really weird because the better my aim has been getting, the more SR I've been dropping. So I'm not so, sure if I'm relying too much on aim. Yeah, or not. Well, my typically my recommendation, right, is 
probably not as much Kovacs uh, or like not as much aim trainer. So aim trainers can be very, very helpful for learning how to practice your aim, but they shouldn't really overtake too much gameplay um, because gameplay is where you really get the actual um, knowledge of how to play the game, right? There's a bunch of other things into the game that, you know, I'll just, uh, the five categories that I usually go over while I play with people and coach them is like ability usage, ultimate usage, um, positioning, uh, awareness, and then finally mechanics. Mechanics is only one fifth of that, right? And yeah. um, mm. so that's yeah, like- You're going to see an interesting alt at the, at the very end of this, which I had good intentions, but yeah, you'll see. Yeah, okay. So um, <laughs> basically- you know, mechanics isn't everything. And then on top of that, mechanics from an aim trainer doesn't always translate to in-game as well as like, you know, in-game you're going to have shields and people shooting at you and they're going to be moving around and you're going to be moving around and you're going to have like, you know, 10,000 other distractions that aren't going to be present in an aim trainer. Um, so just my recommendation is kind of... Do aim training proportional to how much time you play. So if you play like, you know, one hour a day, I probably say don't even do any aim trainers. If anything, do do aim trainers maybe like in queues and stuff like that. But that would be a, so little time that you probably want to be spending as much time possible playing. Right now, if you're playing more, let's say like you know we're getting up to two to four hours. Right, that's where I probably say like twenty minutes ish of aim training a day is fine because then you're getting aim your aim training in, but then you're also practicing the game. And then again, it, in between queues is always fine. Right, if you're doing that in between. Yep. cues because of course you're you have queue time so you can't really do anything during um then i probably say cap out at like an hour because like even for example like uh, i don't know if you're familiar with professional players but you've been playing for a while so idd cutie ha doesn't uh, has done an aim guide before where he talks about you know he he plays like you know he's a professional player he plays like eight to twelve hours a day yeah he only does like an hour of, of aim training right so um Basically, aim training shouldn't overtake a ton of your gameplay, and I would imagine that you're not playing eight to twelve hours a day. Yeah, no, usually. not not eight to uh, eight to twelve hours a day. So no. usually, one, like anywhere yeah. from like one to four. It really depends on my yeah. Mood. So and even on those like one hour days, you know, there's days where I just don't aim train, but mm -hmm. I try to do it Monday through Friday. Um, so was know. the aim? So one to four hours is aim training included in that or not included? Uh, that's not included. So not included. I'll do like one to four hours of Overwatch, Overwatch. and then, mm -hmm. you know, I'll go take like a little break and stuff like that. And then I'll go mm -hmm. do Kovacs, um, and okay. do all that. So recommend my recommendation again, kind of like of how you should be approaching that is probably if you're doing like one to four hours a day and then you all, uh, let's just, you know, add in that extra time that you get from Kovacs, right? Let's set like up that to like, you know, two, two to five hours a day. Right. Um, that means that now I probably recommend going maybe like 30 minutes of Kovacs. And then again, if you're wanting to do that, you can do it in between queues, which would just kind of f make it so that you're playing more Overwatch, which will get you, you know, more in tune with the game. Per like, you know, practice makes perfect. So the more you're able to actually play the game, the better you're going to be getting at the game. Um, so that all makes sense. Yep, yep. All right, so then we can probably go ahead and just get started here. That's, you know, what I was just wanted to talk about before we got into it. So I'll just be a minute or so while I'm looking for something to talk about, and then I'll talk about it when I see it. So we're on Widow here, and then you said you play Tracer McCree Widow. Yeah, I, I play uh, Tracer McCree. And then also, I think during this, we ended up having Gazaria, and she was, like, begging our DPS to go uh, Hanzo. Mm -hmm. I don't really play Hanzo, but I did it just yeah. for Grab Dragon. And then, mm -hmm. yeah. So that part was bad. Yeah. Um. Sometimes, like, if you don't play Hanzo, sometimes, like, uh, it's hard in those situations because Hanzo's, like, a decent character, but, like, if you're playing McCree, McCree's, like, the best character at the moment th that you could possibly be picking, right, out, out of DPS. So, like, to be honest, like, just sometimes people aren't going to have the best call-outs, especially like, if you don't play the character. Just sometimes you might want to just say no, and, like, you might not have to even call it out, but just don't swap, right? But it's up to you. I mean, if you want to play some Hanzo to like appease them right that might result in some better team synergy but at the same time it might also just mean that you're losing because you're not playing a good character you're good at yeah in this game everybody was in voice and we were, we were communicating yeah. pretty well okay so like we're moving forward here it's good nice shots Okay, 
Okay, so we're looking pretty solid so far. We got some picks. We're doing some damage. Make sure that we're paying attention to our health bar. We've been low a couple times here, and I don't know if we've... I don't, I don't... I haven't heard us requesting healing, so it's a good habit to get into is just request healing when you're low. That's going to let your supports know. Like, let's say, for example, I think um, there's a Baptiste behind... Or an Ana behind us, right? But let's say we were behind Ana. That's going to let her know we're behind you. I need healing. It's just going to give them an in-game audio cue. It's just is going to get you healing faster, so you're not sitting at 40 HP. Okay. Okay, so pretty solid. No. Noticing, uh, you know, I'll call things out as I see them, so um, then we'll go more in depth if I see them repeat. But so far, I'm noticing quite a few body shots, so we might talk about how, like, how we can look to hit more headshots at some point here. Yeah, I think this was, like, my first game of the day, so mm. I, it was warming up, but uh, I think you'll see later on, like, I'm hitting a lot of shots. Yeah. Yes, and although on a Widowmaker, very nice. Okay, so um, hmm, I'm trying to think here. So just some real quick crosshair placement. You know, the crosshair placement will might get into at some point here, but just real quick while we're come while we grapple up here, we kind of come up top and then we see them some people over there and then we're kind of looking over this direction to the left um when probably not too likely that there's going to be people over there yet and we've also seen people kind of on our screen through the you know through the bars there that there's people right in front of us so we kind of look over to the side for no reason um in that situation so that's just you know some making sure we're keeping a crosshair where we know people are going to be right um and that would be in this doorway if we know that they're coming out of that doorway right that's the most likely place for people to be so um there we just kind of come up and originally place our crosser in a weird spot so here it's good job where we see the windmaker nice shots let them up Yep, aim is looking very, very solid, and this is pretty much just a roll so far, so not too much to talk about. Again, requesting healing, wanting to make sure we're not just sitting at 100 HP, because at the moment now we're just down 75 hp and then that means that for example when a maker can just one shot body shot us rather than having to hit a headshot which just makes it so much easier for us to die so we just want to make sure capping back at full hp before you know before the next fight starts here again nothing's been really happening so it's just kind of been smooth sailing for the moment Okay, very nice. I like that we're focusing the Widow to start off rather than, you know, you know, fo focusing her first rather than fo focusing other things. Alright, so here we just we, we get pushed back, we're grappling away. Um probably just want to make sure we're backing up faster. We're noticing when you know monkey's pushing us, so here, you know, we, we just kinda sit here for a little too long and the monkey ends up pushing us on top of that. Um don't make sure we're placing Venomine a little bit more often, right? So far we've I've seen us place it twice and you know this is just going to allow us to damage monkey like twice as fast if he does get on top of us. So far, like I said, it's been mostly smooth sailing. We have really solid aim mechanics and we're getting a lot of picks um and you know we might see a lot more w within the next 24 minutes here but um so far you have me kind of convinced you don't belong in this rank and that's making me think that one of the very big things that might just be affecting your gameplay is tilt queuing um and just queuing when you're not playing your best which this does look like it's doing where you're when you are playing w one of your better times right Let's, let's keep it up. Okay, 
Okay, take here we're playing really far back when we're when our when our team's really far forwards there. So yeah, okay. So with our current angle, um, we're just super far back, and you know, keep in mind that even on a character like Widowmaker, the further away we're playing, it just is going to make shots harder to hit, just because you know smaller targets are much harder to hit than bigger targets. Right when something's right next to us, it's much easier target to hit. On yeah. top of that, you know, it's just going to when something's further away then it's going to take, you know, that's that's the big main one, right? And um, you also, at this range, I would imagine this is getting very close to the range in which you're going to have that fall-off damage. So right now we're just playing a little bit far, like, far away where, like, a headshot might not even kill somebody from this range. So um, might want to be a little bit closer so we can actually participate in this fight. Okay, and then we end up dying. Right? So it's not, it's not actually uh, that 300 meters for the... Um, for that, or I, I don't even know if that's 300 meters, whatever. So, um, basically here we're just playing really, really far away, and we're also kind of keeping that same angle even after we shot. So, something that, you know, I tell Widowmaker players all the time is don't stay on your angle when you're in the Widow 1v1. So, I like that we're going for obscure angles. We're not kind of taking this wide angle, and it looks like we adjusted very well. Whereas, like, on the first point, when we when they didn't have a Widowmaker, we were taking these very wide angles where we can see everybody, but then once they did got, get a Widow, we kind of um, narrowed in to where we're now we're making it so that we can only see Widowmaker, which is really good with our kind of um, positioning and, and also awareness of, you know, how should we be playing. But um, in this situation, what we're lacking is that we actually, we go for shots, right? We go for multiple shots. We go for one shot, two shot, um... Three shot, I believe, right? Three shots down in the same angle, right? And then Widowmaker kills us. Um, don't stay on the same angle for too long, especially after we've missed a bunch, bunch of shots, right? Because and that's just letting the other Widowmaker know, hey, I'm here, come kill me, right? So when it comes to Widowmaker 1v1s, roughly 75% of these 1v1s aren't going to be won by having better aim. It's going to be won by who sees the other person first, right? If you see enemy Widowmaker first, unless you whiff that shot, that's a such that's a very, very easy shot to hit because Widowmaker's scope, when she's scoped in, she's barely moving, right? So you're essentially hitting a standing still target with a massive head hit box. So um, you see her first, you're m much more likely to win than if she sees you first. And that's why you do, you're supposed to take these obscure angles. So that's good if we're taking this obscure angle. It's just way too far back. And we also stay on the obscure angle far too long when we probably should shoot a couple shots. We miss them. We move. We rotate. We go left. We go right. We do something. We don't want to just sit there, especially after we've missed the shot on the widow. After we missed that shot on the widow, we kind of just sat there and tried to recharge our bullets. Whereas, you know, what we should be assuming is that Widowmaker is probably going to headshot me, right? So we just would, for example, like here, if we miss that shot, we're just going to duck around the corner real quick, right? So just there, it's probably an unnecessary death when we could have just pretty easily prevented it by going and using some better fight awareness and um or just got ducking around the corner With every yeah so this is where uh zarya yeah this is where it gets bad. Yeah. would you so i you know i know you have a lot of footage here are you particularly one and go over Hanzo, or would you rather just nope. skip through it in character? okay it's good good, <laughs> yeah. good thing i asked then all right yeah it didn't last too long Sounds good. Okay, so we swap over. That that wasted some time, right? Another thing to consider, your, you know, yourself as well, um, just so that you can keep this in mind as you're approaching, um, picking when to play, when to swap Tracer, when to swap McCree, when to swap Widow. Um, Widowmaker becomes less and less good uh, when they're they get closer and closer spawns, right? The one pick potential like the the pick potential that widowmaker provides that's a big part of her kit is because a lot of times as widowmaker you know it happens but a lot of times you're not gonna be that character that's getting six kills a fight right or or you know four plus a lot of the times as widowmaker you're playing the character where you're getting the opening pick where you're getting one two three people at the very beginning of the fight and then that's what opens up things um opens up fights which is kind of what we did on the first point and on first point this is really really good because on first point right they're spawned so far away it's all all the way over here, right? Second point, pretty much same thing, right? They're spawned super far away. But then on this third point, well, now they're, there's, especially once you're inside this area, they're spawns right next to the cart, right? Which means that 
Peacemaker's pick potential becomes a lot less valuable. And on top of that, it's also getting a lot more indoorsy, right? Once you get to this area, there's a lot, le a lot less angles for you to take. There's a lot less out in the open. So Widowmaker just doesn't become as good on this third point as she was on the previous two points. So that's just another thing to keep in mind in that you might have even wanted to swap McCree instead of Han or like instead of the Hanzo that uh, McCree would have been a pretty decent pick because now McCree is going to be a better pick here right does that make sense yep so think think 2 CP2 right Widowmaker is fantastic on the first point not so great on the second point usually because they just have such close spawns that um especially on attack right on attack it's fantastic on first point second point not so much because they just get their pick the picks that you get they're getting those players back instantly this was also the game that uh, was the reason why I decided I was like, I'm just going to get a coach. Like, this game stressed me out so much after yeah. losing it. Oh, yeah. Spoiler alert. We lose. Yeah. <laughs> Uh-oh. So there we probably could have just peeked that and gotten the kill. Okay, so, I mean, we get the kill anyways, but there we probably just could have peeked that and gotten the kill, but we were kind of delayed with that. Um... So, yeah, I was I was yeah. calling the monkey. Uh, I didn't know where the like, the widow was at the time, and I was just calling him up there. Mm -hmm. Which I mean, just keep in mind that you know I I think we we hear the Zenyatta right. We can hear him charging up his orbs. Yep. We yep. can hear him shooting right, and we know that he's right here. We don't need to peek this window to get a kill on him. So that's just probably a pretty easy kill that monkey's not necessary for. So we just want to pay attention to our surroundings, right? Being aware of what's happening, so we can get that easy kill on him. Right? Nice shot. Okay, now Widowmaker does get a pick on our monkey. Insert stupid moment right here. <laughs> All right, so now we're getting on to, you know, some, you're right, stupid moment. So, like, you know, why was it stupid? Well, first off, we go for the Zarya, right? Probably not the character we want to be going for, just um, in general, tanks aren't going to want to be the first thing that we're focusing. Um while we have other things that are pretty easy options. The other thing is that we just get really, really aggressive with this play, where we're just kind of running into them. Also, when we're going for sneaky plays, I'd probably recommend going for some crouches if you're trying to go fast. Crouch spam, where you go crouch on crouch, crouch on crouch, right? But crouching is just going to muffle your sound footsteps and make it a lot harder for you for them to hear you, whereas here we don't, and then that's going to probably make it, you know, especially the higher up in ranks we go, the easier it is going to be for them to just notice that we're here, and then therefore react, so yeah, here, probably not the smartest play to be going for, just really, really aggressive, and then therefore, we just don't really accomplish much, and probably could have died, especially if this was a higher rank. Okay, um, Okay. so now we get aggressive, though I'd probably say we were sitting really, really far back here in the beginning of this fight, so a um, couple different things. So first off, I'd probably say positioning is going to be one of the bigger ones that we're going to go over here. So um, first off, with just range on the Kree, so we're at 7 minutes and 24 seconds, we'll just leave this real quick. Right, go back to the training range, and this is, you know, kind of applies to Widow 2 in, in, in similar ways. So, um, on McCree, right, you have what you call fall-off damage. So, the further away we're getting, the less damage we're doing. Widowmaker, that's a very extreme distance, but it does still apply where you won't be able to one-chop someone if you're super far away. So, on McCree, that's going to look something like this, where if we stand right here, we can go one, two, three body shot, but we just move a couple of meters back, and now we're, it's one, two, three, four body shot, right, which is a very big number, you know, because that takes extra shots to kill. Even further away, right, we get all the way up to the point where it's taking us six shots, one, two, three, four, five, six, right? Um, that means that we probably don't want to be staying very far away from people because we're doing less damage. And on top of that, we're probably going to be missing more shots too because as we discussed previously, the further away we are, the smaller targets are, and that's just going to make it harder for us to hit them, right? Now, Widowmaker can do that at a much further distance because Widowmaker has a scope and therefore they're that makes him bigger, and then on top of that, she, you know, has the 
lowered sensitivity, which will make her more accurate at a range, but Makri does not have that, so he's going to be pretty garbage at a range, and it's going to be very in inaccurate, whereas if we're right here on someone, it's going to be a lot easier to hit our shots. So, roughly range-wise on Makri, we probably want to be sitting somewhere um, between, like, 15 meters and, like, 30 meters, roughly. Um, maybe I'd say, like, 10 meters to 30 meters, right? This is the range in which we can hit flashbangs, um, and then... Anything up to 20 meters is going to be your, you know, where you can do your max damage. And then once we're getting past this, this is like kind of the acceptable range. And then once we get past that, that's where we probably don't want to be. And we're just kind of sitting there on our offense, right? We're probably not where we want to be doing. Now, Widowmaker, um, you know, not as big of a deal because we can still one-shot people from really far away. But you also have to just be careful that we're not sitting too, too far away because, you know, that's still a much smaller target than, you know, these things are right here, right? It's just a much smaller target, much harder to hit, and then therefore it's going to be much more inaccurate, right? So we just want, might want to make sure we're not, like, sitting all the way, all the way across the map, right, from people, which is kind of what we were doing. Um, now, kind of on top of that, like getting getting back to the game we were in, we were that's fine where we were. We were seven minutes and something, seven fifty ish, ish around there, yeah. <laughs> okay, so some around here, yeah, yeah. So here as well, like we're just. The only thing we can see is tanks now. Um, on the Creed, is it seeming like a bigger issue than our Widowmaker? Um. A, a little more the, of a bigger issue because we just seem to be shooting a lot of tanks and just kind of fixated on them. Um, so just real quick, let's go in depth on that and like kind of what why that matters. So when it comes to target priority, kind of what what should we be shooting at? Um, tanks usually aren't going to be that right. Tanks have two to three times the health of other characters. They have shields, tanking abilities, bubbles, and armor, right, which just makes them very difficult to kill. Um, and then on top of that, they um, you know supports and DPS just output the statistical value tanks they they're a very important role and they can carry but their job is to create space for the other roles whereas supports do the healing and dps do the damage so therefore they're higher value kills so um here we're just spending a lot of time shooting at tanks like we kind of flanked and we shot the zarya first which you know if we have the opportunity to go for other things go for other things here we're just putting ourselves on an angle where we don't we can't really shoot at anything at all here right we so not only are we super far away but we're stuck shooting at shields we're um not really in a position to shoot anything so we just want to be a lot closer so just you know i always you know i'll give you, you know, where we could be standing instead we could just be standing much closer using the card as cover using ryan and and the bubbles cover right just positioning somewhere up here so that we can actually participate and shoot at things and do things um whereas here we can't really do very much okay now we do get aggressive once we get the beat i like that that's good okay give me a second i'm sleeping real quick <laughs> All right, so now we're going to go over something else. So we're at 7 minutes and 57 seconds, so we're going to go to the practice range here real quick. So um, now we're going to go over crosshair placement. We talked slightly briefly on that at the very beginning, but are you familiar with the term? Yep, I am. Yep. So, you know, you, you get the general idea, just placing a crosshair in the best place possible. So, you know, this will be a quick review for you if you, you know, are familiar with the particular areas and what I'm talking about. But, you know, it is still things that I'm noticing that we want to look to work on, which I'll, I'll show you once we get back in game. So the first major step to crosshair placement is placing a crosshair at head level, which is what I'm noticing that we're struggling with a little bit once we um, once I get back in and I'll show you how, how I'm noticing that. So keeping a crosshair at head level constantly is going to make our shots much easier to hit because, you know, when we don't have to adjust up and to the side, that means that there's it's going to be an easier shot, right? That when we don't have to do um, a large adjustment, these shots are going to be easier to hit, right? When we have to do that, that's a very difficult shot. We do this, it's just a very easy shot, right? So there's a lot less adjustment, therefore it's easier to hit. And of course, headshots just do a whole lot more damage than body shots do. And we want to be hitting them. Um, so that's also just going to change. Let's say we're just shooting at shields, shooting down a corridor, right? Shooting into, you know, bots or, or sorry, or people, right? We're shooting into people. Just our default shot's going to be hitting body, right? But and that, let's change that up and we're aiming head level. Now our default shot is just 
head level, right? We're just naturally hitting them because that's where we're aiming, right? So, so it's just changing up our crosshair placement so that we're aiming at head level, right? On top of that, we talked briefly at the, about this before as well, but just aiming where we know people are going to be. So we know Bach just went top left, or sorry, Bach goes right side. We know he's there, so we're pre-aiming right at the head level so that when he comes around the corner, we're already aiming at his head, right? We already um, have it lined up, right? Very easy shot to hit because it's very little adjustment, right? We know he's on left, so we're pre-aiming left at head level. So when we turn the corner, very easy shot to hit, right? Head shots. Now, these guys are on a little bit of a slope. So the same way we'd look down on a Torb and up on a tank, we're going to look down on these guys a little bit. So when we turn the corner, right, pretty much already looking at their heads, right? Now, that's just the basics of how crosshair placement works. And let's go and see how we're not implementing that into our gameplay um, so that we can hopefully look to do that in the future. So let's bring it back to this last fight. Um, right, so first off, we, we come up here, we, we go for the flash on the Ana, and which is fine, and we just don't adjust high enough, quick enough. Here we go for the flashbang. Um, low to the ground, which of course is good because we're right next to her, but then we just adjust up too slowly, which is fine. But this is where we see more of it is up against the tanks. So now, right, we, we're going to see we go for some shots. We're aiming kind of really low to the ground here. Um, we go for the right click, aiming really low to the ground. So when we go for shots on the Saria, we're just like, we're aiming down, right? You see how we're just looking really low? And then you're going to notice yeah. we adjust upwards, right? We see the Widowmaker. We see that we right as she peeked out, we saw that we were aiming at her legs. And here you see we're aiming at her legs, right? We're about to turn the corner here. We see that we're aiming at her legs. And we're going to aim up. We And we hit two body shots. So we're still not aiming at head level, right? Because every time we're... Oh, it's hard to see when you're stinking um, recurls and pulling <laughs> yeah. it up, right? But every time we're, we're adjusting back down, it's adjusting back down to her body because we're not aiming at the head level. It just means that all these shots are naturally hitting the body because we're not aiming at the right level, right? So had those shots been aimed at a head level, those would be head shots and therefore would have resulted in a kill, right? Um, which is the big difference between aiming body level and head, and head level is it results in more kills, results in more damage, results in faster damage, um, and therefore you're going to be doing a whole lot more in your gameplay if we're implementing that. It's All right. Um, not the best high noon so let's you know this is our first ult that we've seen uh besides uh, i think we saw one sites i think uh, um three three i think sites. i got like three yeah i mean I was it, it relatively fast hmm. oh okay well i guess we're using them well then because i didn't even notice so um in any case here right we just use it when they're they have a ton of cover right so um when we're using our ultimate right we have kind of two things to worry about we have to worry about you know, getting kills, and we have to worry about keeping ourselves alive, right? Here, we're fine. We have a shield in front of us. We don't have to... There's no issue with keeping ourselves alive. We're not suiciding for this kill, um, or for the Sinun. But the issue here is that they just... There's no reason why this is going to... This is just isn't going to get kills flat up, right? Because they are all near cover. There's no reason for them to not be near cover. No one's out in the open. They're all right next to something, right? Just good... Just real quick, good cover usage is is good positioning, right? Good positioning is the usage of cover, is bad positioning is the absence of cover, and that applies to the enemies too. When we're right here, right, we can go like this in half of a second, we can't, no one here can see us, right? We're using, and that's using cover properly. These guys currently are right next to cover, and that means that, like, the, if you look at the McCree and Widowmaker, they're right next to cover, which means that in half a second here, they just duck around the corner. And then, now that means that we... Oh, okay, they re-peaked because of the shield, right? But that meant that they could just very easily not peek for you, right? They could just very easily get away from it. So it, alternatively, what we want to be doing is we want to be high nooning when they're out in the open where they have nowhere to run, right? Where they can't get away from us. So let's wait, like, you know, let's look for a situation here where maybe that could have been better. Um, okay, well, now this is a situation that would have been better, right? Now they have to touch point, right? They have to come out to touch point because we're right about the cap. Right, they we weren't about to cap back here, right? But we are about to cap up here. They're running out. Where's if we, you know, use High Noon, Reinhardt and Zarya, not as many places for them to run, right? Not, you know, they're they're out in the open. There we have a lot, we have a lot better of a chance of actually securing a kill out of that if we're and at least breaking shields or doing something with it, right? So here that was just you know not so great of a High Noon usage. A lot of body shots, which we were even, I was even noticing that a little bit on our Widowmaker as well. It's just a lot of body shots happening. So we want to make sure we're aiming for those head levels so we can hit those head shots. All right.
one shot. So decent time, we'll, you know, we'll chuck up a lot of that to just the Hanzo. <laughs> All right, so now we're expecting a Widowmaker again. I like the positioning that we're trying to take obscure angles to get the Widowmaker, right? That's really good. Though, again, um, B, when, when we're going up against the Widowmaker, cross our placement, aiming where we know whether it's most likely for somebody to be, right? Um, we're, like, if we're picking a spot out of top left, bottom left, I guess you have uh, five spots here, right? Top left, bottom left, top right, bottom right, main, right? Which would be, and I guess, sorry, let me let me condense that again. You know, main just leads out to bottom left and bottom right anyways, right? So let, let's just pick those four, right? Top left, bottom left, top right, bottom right. Where's the most common place for Widowmaker to be coming from? Uh, well, I mean, if you're on the point, then top left, if you're looking at a top right. Yep, looking right, at right them top right. Is. Exactly, right where she is. So here we, you know, we're we're eyeing out, we're, we're probably looking for Widowmaker, I would assume. We're expecting a Widowmaker because they were on Widowmaker last last round, right? That can be something that we're expecting. Yet we're we're aiming downwards to begin with, right? Which is just isn't where we want to have our crosshair to start off, right? Whereas let's say we had a crosshair on that top right to start, we would have acquired this target even much much faster right we would be able to kill her much faster right now we still get do the get, get the kill because we have good positioning here um but you know we could be on that kill faster and therefore you know we wouldn't give her any chance to kill us right if you're just already aiming there so that's just kind of going over cross her placement still very nice shots Okay, now we're hitting some headshots, right? Looking, honestly, for some reason, it's looking like our Widowmaker is like, we're, we're aiming slightly higher on Widowmaker than we were on McCree. So I think maybe we're just intent, we know that on Widowmaker we can go for the one shot, so we're intentionally going for headshots on Widow, but um, that's just a guess. Yeah, I think, I don't know if I sent you the my, my accuracy or anything like that, but I have like a 48% weapon accuracy on McCree, mm -hmm. but only a 6% crit. And then Widowmaker, I think I have like, around a 45 but i think it's like 21 percent crit yeah so there there just right there you see the massive differences and i think that's also just your mindset is the big thing is that for some reason it is at the moment it's seeming like as if we don't think that it's an important thing to have headshots on mccree though we do understand that it's an important thing to have headshots on widowmaker and i just want you to know you know it is an important thing to have headshots on mccree faster kills right result in in secured kills right when you don't kill someone fast they have a higher chance to get away to get healed to get tanking to use movement ability Abilities, to use any abilities to kill you first right when we kill someone slower that's ultimately going to result in less kills in total right when we kill someone faster we're going to be able to get and that's the beauty of what, may, what makes Widowmaker as a character so good is because she can kill someone the fastest out of any character in the game she can one shot right whereas McCree you know the fastest is just going to be hitting those headshots and and killing someone like that so we're, when we're not hitting those headshots that's a big deal right Okay, very nice. Good awareness. No one can hide from my sight. Okay, again, repeating the exact same angle, which just allows D.Va to very easily pressure us out and push us away, which she would not have been able to do. Alternatively, what we can do is go main, peek from this angle, you know, the Widowmaker's on the left, we could, you know, kill her possibly there. If we're, you know, we use sights anyway, so we'd be able to see that she's on the left. Um, we can grapple up real quick up the high ground, in which case we can peek main still, we can, you know, come up to the top angle, right? We just have a bunch of different options. We probably don't want to be sitting bottom right if they all know we're there and they're expecting us to be there and then they're pressuring us which just means that we're, we're able to do more and survive longer right and actually get kills right again coming back to the exact same angle and then diva is able to just shut us down right all right so um Real quick, why don't we talk about strengths and weaknesses? So, kind of what are we looking at gameplay wise, right? What are we, what what are you struggling with? Um, I don't think so. We we've talked, you know, a couple of things about mechanics, but I don't think mechanics in general is the big one. So, um, ability usage, 
not too terrible on McCree. You know, both on McCree and Widowmaker ability usage kind of takes the sidelines in comparison to other roles. But, you know, Widowmaker maybe Venomine more often. Like, I saw us use it once this round and twice the other round, right? It's just not as often as we should be. So just, you know, it's going to reveal people's locations, deal some extra damage, plop it down anytime you get a chance, right? Um, besides that, not a ton, right? McCree, not a lot. Make sure we're going for headshots out of a flashbang. That's pretty much it, right? So ability usage in general just is a, is a low priority. Not really any work needed. Um, ultimates. I haven't seen too many terrible sites. I'd probably say the only thing there with our sites was just we are using it and then repeaking the same angle, which, so on Widowmaker, not a problem. McCree, I've only seen one of them, but on McCree, it was slightly higher where we just, you know, wanted to make sure we're using it when people are out in the open and we can actually see people and they don't have cover usage. So maybe that bumps up a ultimate usage to a, like, kind of low to medium priority, but again, on um, on Widowmaker and McCree, their ultimates kind of take a sideline in comparison to other ultimates in the game. So that's pretty low. Again, not not much work needed. Now, when you get to the top, th the other three here, we're getting we're getting a little bit more important stuff. So mechanics, general mechanics of you just going pew pew shoot shoot and just general tracking and aiming, really fantastic, right? That Kovax you know shows through. You can see that we just hit shots very naturally and easily. Um, but where we do see issues is particularly the crosshair placement of aiming where we know people are going to be, um, crosshair placement of aiming ahead level, which, you know, means that we're going to result in more headshots and kills, and then aiming where we know people are going to be is going to result in faster target acquisition. Um, on top of that, other things that go into the mechanics category would just be the, like, target priority, making sure we're not going for tanks, um all the time, right, which we sometimes we spend a little bit too much time on them when we have the option to go for other characters. So overall, that is a ca mechanics as a category, probably looking like a medium priority for you to work on, right? Now, when it comes to awareness, um, awareness, honestly, we haven't talked about much with awareness. Um, like, yeah, so awareness hasn't really seemed like a big issue. Now, that one is a very slow, is a, the hardest to diagnose, in the, or sorry, the slowest to diagnose, right? You see it the slowest coming up just because it takes the most time to notice it. Um, so we haven't seen a ton on it so far, though I do think it's probably still above um, our ability usage and our ultimate usage because those don't really have any content to them. So awareness, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll talk more on that as we come up probably, but, you know, just tiny things here and there where we just don't notice people, um, and what, and where they're at. Um, that means that we probably want to just make sure paying attention to that. So that, that probably go below our mechanics or definitely go below our mechanics. So mechanics, maybe we'll bump up to like a, um, I'm trying to trying to think of where to place this. For now, we'll put it at a low to medium, right? We'll we'll, we'll put our um, awareness at a low to medium priority, and then finally we get to positioning, um, and then I also might mix in just play style in there real quick. So positioning wise, um, making sure we're within range of people, right? We just constantly are, or not constantly, but you know, McCree playing too far away, Widowmaker sometimes playing too far away, um, and on top of that. The big one is just don't repeat angles, which kind of gets into um, a little bit of play styling. So uh, positioning, not too terrible, but there's, again, inconsistencies here and there. Um, so I'd probably say our positioning is kind of like a um, medium, maybe a low to medium, right, priority for you to work on. And then finally we get to, like, a, a play style um, of just how you're playing. And then the big one on Widowmaker would just be just don't repeat angles and make sure we're, you know, paying attention to the Widowmaker. Here we just, that we're constantly going back to that same angle, which just repeatedly is getting us shut down. And it just means we can't do anything, right? So um, I would probably say that um, a lot of our stuff, it's not, we're not struggling with any one thing in particular. It's not like one area here that we're really trash at. And there's not one area where we're really fantastic at, um, you know, besides just the, some of them not really needing a ton of work, right? Um, it's just that we're kind of neutral in everything, and that means that you just need to look to get consistency, right? That's how um, you know it works when you're a when you're a better player, right? Which you know you've peaked masters before, so that's kind of what it's going to look like, right? So um, getting consistent across the board, right? Kind of take it one step at a time, focus on one thing, right? Getting consistent comes down to working on each category to to where your you know mechanics aren't just okay, they're 
perfect, right? Or your, you know, positioning isn't just okay, it's it's really good, right? So we kind of want to um, iron those, all these sections out, and then it's just a little bit of everything that's sprinkling into some, um, you know, some plat gameplay, right? To where we're not able to carry these games effectively. Um, so, and then on top of that, I'd probably say the other big one is just, you know, the tilt queuing, right? It's just make sure you're not um, constantly going and going and going and going when you are know that you're going to lose, right? Um, and that's going to result in better games. Um, now, that, yeah, that's pretty much it for now. So we'll just continue on. So we're, right now we're just being shut up by the D.Va. Okay, good repositioning up to the high grounds. Though they, we have a tracer on us. Um, we're just being pocketed through this, but we want to make sure paying attention to the fact that they have a tracer and where she's at. Placing maybe the Venom Mine a little bit earlier, but, you know, besides that, we, we get bailed out there. Okay, so now they all know we're here. Probably shouldn't just be going down the same thing. We're also noticing a lack of players, right? So this is kind of an awareness thing. Um, if there's a lack of players down main, we should probably be thinking in our head, where is players, right? Where, where are they at? Where, where, where are they going? So here we just don't see anyone, and we should probably be thinking that when you know we just saw a bunch of people a second ago because now they're all going left, and this is some information that we should probably know so that we can go and reposition and look left. Okay. Um, one other thing I'd probably say is that we're n we're kind of putting ourselves with our positioning in range of people a lot. Like he right here earlier, we were just kind of we scoping this way, and then Diva just ran straight into us because we're scoping up like right next to their tanks. And then here we're about to scope up like right next to their tanks. Like we we see they're like the fight's happening like an inch from us. Yeah, we're just kind of chilling there, right? Like here we see that they're all right there. They're all pushing. Yet yeah, we're we're kind of still sitting in this spot and we're still scoping in like right next to them. Now we've been pocketed both of these times and supported by our teams, but ju keep in mind that just because a mistake is not punished does not mean it's not a mistake, right? And in this instance, like we're just way too close. We're just way too much in the brawl and in the fight. And when we probably should not be, when we could just very easily back up slightly f further, right? Like, let's say just, for example, we, we stood on top of this and just, we're right here. There's just, there's that slight difference in positioning or I, maybe even like something like this, right? Where we're like kind of where Ana's at, right? We're just slightly further back, slightly further away from the fight, right? We're just going to be making all the difference. And here we just don't seem to notice when the tanks are like an inch from us. And then we're sitting here still and we're sitting here still. And then now we back up, but it's just like really late, late in the fight that we're backing up like that. Okay, again, notice just positioning wise out in the open, right? Good positioning is the usage of cover. Bad positioning is the absence of cover, right? If we're right here and Hanzo looks at us, he starts shooting at us, boom, can't see us, right? Here, Hanzo's looking at us, Hanzo's shooting at us, boom, oh wait, there's a wall there, right? Where, where the heck are we going? Um, there's nowhere to go and then therefore we're going to die if we're standing here. So this is just going to keep, keep our survivability up a ton. And again, I probably say we're just a lot we're, we're, we've survived a lot this game but i think that that's a lot of that's going to come down to just because we've been um ha had a good team that's supporting us and these mistakes aren't being punished right when they m could be in in other instances right especially if we're if we're going higher up in ranks like if that if we're doing that same positioning in a you know a master's lobby we're going to get punished for that right which is why we're not currently in a master's lobby Okay, focusing on tanks, right? Um, so now, now we swap over, right? Which is good, but we just want to make that swap faster, where we're not initially looking at the tanks. Like here, okay, actually, never mind. I didn't see the Devo's one HP there. My bad on not paying attention to health bar, but you know, she gets full HP, and we're still shooting at her. So we just want to pay attention to her health bar. So we're still lo looking at the Diva and shooting at her, even after she got healed back up now we do look over at these other guys which is good just wants to you know and I, i'm not saying that t target priority is a humongous thing it's just there sometimes 
like which is kind of like with everything there's no humongous thing it's just bits and pieces here and there of everything All right, so I kind of want to get to where we lose this fight. So let's see what what causes this loss. Okay. That's doing nothing but revealing your position, right? It's very unlikely that it's gonna connect with something when we know that they know where we're at. They know they see us shooting, right? That's something we kind of want to keep in mind is that when we shoot. People know where we are, right? They see the beam trail, they they or the shot trail. They hear it. They see us, right? They they know we're here, so they're not gonna like kind of actively walk into a headshot. So us doing that is is honestly doing nothing more than just revealing our position while also just deterring them, right? It's not doing a ton. So um, in that instance, probably don't want to just be doing that. Now I like uh, we're about to back up here to high ground, maybe. Okay, we back up there very slowly. I'd probably say right after this pulse happens, it'd be a good idea to just back up to the high ground. Um, always want to have kind of an escape option, especially against a dive, right? We want to be thinking about these escape options of where can I go once I get dove, right? We're probably going to be like the number one thing on our team currently that they're going to try to dive, right? Because as, as Widowmaker, you know, Ana has sleep, Ana has need, Lucio's speed, Junkrat has his mines and his tire. Widowmaker, you know, she's a... the much lower health than all those other guys doesn't have heals does have grapple but that's it right so we're going to be a really very popular dive target here and we just want to have an option so here we get tracer pulsed and this is where i'd be going okay i'm going to grapple up to the high ground and to where junk's standing and just reposition but we still stand here and we still stand here and then that's what gets, gets us killed out in the open not grappling away and then we get dove, right? So we just want to make sure we're looking to grapple out and, and escape there. And then that opening pick results in a, in a, you know, in this fight going downhill. Keep in mind that some mistakes are bigger than other mistakes, right? We could go an entire game perfect and then get into this last fight here, die once, and then ruin the game for us all, right? Um, just because in that situation, had we not died and had we survived, well, now we're not at a disadvantage. In fact, we're at an active advantage because we can participate and do things and get picks and kills, and we're not going to be out of the fight, and we're not going to put our team at a disadvantage. So um, us dying first there is a big bummer because now we're, we lose that fight, and a big part of that is on us. Okay, so now we swap the Tracer to get back, which is fine. Um, but again, instantly we're acquiring the tanks, um, for really no reason. We're also going in kind of immediately into the fight when we probably don't need to be touching cart. Look how far cart has to go until it touches point. And we also have like three other teammates who are standing there. So touching point is not a necessity here. Um, we go and duel a tracer real quick and then we back up to point, but like here we're out of blinks, right? We don't have any blinks left. This is something I always tell tracers is just, you know, make sure we're recharging our blinks. We're not going into duels where we don't have blinks. Going into a duel or a fight when you don't have blinks is just kind of suicide, right? Um, just, you don't want to do that. That's just basically running out into the open. So here we're at zero blinks. What we probably should be doing is just, you know, the strat would be to just sit here on the side, spam at the tanks a little bit. Maybe we can take this time to run, you know, another option would just be to take the time to run around and get, and get on top of the Ana, right? Just run this way, Ana, right? Or if Ana's not there, run this way, get around, go on these guys, right? That's called tanking and off angle, right? This is, this is the main angle right here. This is the off angle, right? This is how you put target priority into practice. This is how you put it into action is getting around them really easily. So here we just immediately engage, immediately go in without, without any reason. And we also going on the tanks like right off the bat, right? Which is just isn't what we want to be shooting at. Now to clarify here, there are times to shoot at tanks, right? We shoot at tanks when they're low. We shoot at them when they're out of position. We shoot at them when they're the only thing to shoot at. But this is not the case in this in this situation, right? And then we're just kind of, you know, sitting there farming tanks, and then we die, right? Um, now let me exit out here real quick. So now we're going to go to the training range, um, and we're going to do a quick, um, you know, re uh, go over the main points of the session, and then do a quick review over everything, and then wrap up the session from there. So, um, honestly, there's there's no one like we said. There's not one thing that's super overlapping 
everything, right? It's, it, there's not like one area where you're really struggling with, and there's not one area, you know, and, and that it's really just a lot of consistency of getting good at, at all these different areas, right? And getting consistent. We're making less and less mistakes and getting more and more efficient, right? Um, because, it, you know, th this game might have, you might have been really good in that game, and maybe the only reason why you lost in that game was just because your team, which is going to happen, right? That's going to be the case. Sometimes you're going to do really good, and then your team's just going to not be good. But, you know, Losing constantly and, and staying at, you know, 2,600 shows me that either this isn't just your, like, this isn't happening all the time where, like, you know, you're not doing super good all the time or maybe sometimes you just aren't playing super great or tilt cues comes into play. But consistency is going to be really, really, really massive thing for everybody looking to get better at the game is just getting better at you know, not making mistakes, right? And be and doing good most of the time, not just some of the time, right? Um, now, getting onto the things, right? So probably say the number one and two things, right, are going to be like kind of mechanics and positioning, maybe kind of, I'm, I'm not sure which one I put first. So, you know, those two are kind of tied for number one. Um, just the biggest things to work on mechanics make sure we're aiming head level especially on mccree um make sure we're aiming where we know people are going to be um making sure that we're aiming at you know supports and dps not tanks so target priority um and then those are the main ones of mechanics right um moving on to our positioning making sure that we're using cover properly not being out in the open making sure that we are going and let's see what, what were the other ones making sure that we are not re-peaking the exact same angle like four times in a row or multiple times in a row that meant that you know the diva was able to contest us super easily over there um when we re peaked that angle and then the other time widowmaker was able to just shoot us because we re peaked the angle mix it up go for different things right don't re peek after you've shot there like four times because now widowmaker knows where you are right and their whole team knows where you are um moving on let's see um McCree ult, make sure we're using it when they're all out in the open. That, you know, the, that's probably just one of the middle ones. Awareness, there were like, you know, a couple awareness things where you just didn't notice when people were next to us and um, just some paying attention to team composition, like when, when they're on a dive and thinking about how that affects us, so grappling away from them. Um, make sure we're placing our Venom Mine just slightly more often. You know, not terrible, it's just tiny little things here and there of everything. Making sure that we're aiming head level after we land flashbangs. And then, let's see, Tracer, making sure we're not going in without blinks. Um, go on off angles to, that kind of gets into positioning again. Go on off angles to get around and, and go for the, the DPS and supports instead of just focusing on tanks all the time. Right. Yeah, that's one thing I've noticed, though, in, like, lower ranks and stuff like that is anytime, like, let's say I'm playing Tracer or I'm playing Widow and I'm trying to, like, take on those, like, flank routes, it seems my team always follows me. Mm -hmm. And I, I'll be like, no, no, don't follow me, don't follow me. And I'll have, like, that monkey that just, like, is walking next to me or that Reaper. And it's like, no, come on. Like, at least crouch. Right. Um, well... I don't, I don't know if that's common in lower ranks. Um, but... I mean... That shouldn't be too big of a deal. So why don't we just explain off angling real quick, right? Just to go in depth on that. So off angle is essentially just this. So main angle right here. They're all standing right there. We're standing right here. Main angle, right? If we're shooting on this, we shoot at shields and we shoot at tanks, and that's not good. Now an off angle would be if we just went like this real quick, right? Now we just gotten past the shields, gotten past the tanks. We're over here for like half a second, then we're back, right? Very safe, very fast. Only took us a couple of seconds, right? Um, honestly, they, you know, teammates probably wouldn't even have very much time to see that we're doing that and even go to chase us. Now, what? Uh, just I'll give you another example of this, and then I'll give you an example of what a flank is, and then what what the difference between the two is. So, um, another off angle would be if enemy teams there, our teams here, main angle. And then we just took a couple seconds to get up to the high ground, really, right? Really fantastic positioning, got past the tanks and shields straight to the back line, and it means that we just are getting around the things that we don't want to be shooting at, right? Um, very safe, very fast, didn't take us very long, right? Now, a flank is if we did something like this, where we went you know, all the way around, and all the way around, and all the way around, and all the way around, right? So now this took us twice as long, right? This is much more dangerous because we don't have a high ground positioning or we don't have, you know, it's not, we don't have our team right next to us, right? Um, so flanks are long and or dangerous. 
when we're, they take super long, then that means our team could be losing the fight in the process. Um, so we want to make sure if we are ever going for flanks that it's in between fights and only on faster characters usually. And then like a Tracer, for example, can go on flanks more than McCree can. Right? And we also want to make sure we're being semi-safe with the flanks. Right? So um, to be honest, I probably wouldn't say like if you're going on an off angle, a lot of times it might just be too fast for teammates to come with you. And if they do come with you, then, you know, it, it really doesn't make too much of a difference because if you're going on it fast enough, it's not like having an extra teammate there is going to reveal your position. Like if we talked about either of those situations where we want an off angle, right? If a monkey tagged along with us here, was it, it, this is a fast off angle, right? It's not going to change the fact that we get a kill off of that or something like that. High ground, it's still super safe and they're not expecting it. It's not mo having a monkey with this isn't going to change the fact that this is going to get us value, right? Whereas if we're on a flank, and now if, if we're going on a flank and there's a monkey chasing us on the flank, then that might be a problem, right? But at the same time, flanks aren't going to be happening nearly as often, um, right? Only in certain situations, right? That that kind of explain it a little bit better. Do you have any and that answer your question, or do you have any other questions? Yeah, that? No, that explained it. All right, so um, that's pretty much it, right? Mechanics and positioning being the top. Um, middle kind of being, you know, a little bit of the other three, just kind of all over the place, right? Not a ton of super direction. It's just be getting consistent at everything. Um, now, do you have any questions at all about anything we talked about or anything else about the game um, before we wrapped it up? Not really, no. It's it's more or less... So one of the things that I have difficulties with is the McCreel. And that one yeah. thing that I mainly use it for is just zoning. Like for that, for the last point there, the main thought um, whenever I use McCree alt, I'm never really actually going for a kill. I'll whether use it to reload fast or I'll use it to try to zone out. All right, know, so, so that we can push the objective. Yeah, so I'd probably say that's a wrong mentality to have. So let, let me explain that real quick. So um, first off, um, the reload, the kind of the using it to reload is really only something you're going to be using once in a great while. That's like very situational and you're only going to be using that maybe like 5, 10 percent max of uh, percent of the time you're using it like yeah. that. Now, when it comes to zoning people out, again, that's situational. Zoning people out isn't always going to be useful. Like think of any other like it. Sometimes it, it, it works. Like, for example, if you're about to cap or it's overtime and you're trying to get off the, them off cart. But that's the only times ever where it where zoning is useful right any other time what are they going to do they're just going to back up and then it's not going to do anything so now we're left with you know 70 percent of the game where your high noon just isn't doing anything right um so on top of that think of the last one we were using the one we were using it for zoning we just did it way too early mm -hmm. right um they they didn't have to touch cart right away right so maybe we, we kind of miss on uh we underestimated the amount of time it would take them to or the kind of the push the time it would take us to push the cart right or be um yeah we it basically, we thought it would, you know, we're about to cap, but we were still like, you know, five to ten, or probably like 10 seconds away from capping, right? Um, so we just wanted to make sure we're getting that timing down, and we're kind of using that zoning ult after we're like right as we're about to cap or after they've gotten out in the open. And I would probably say go for kills more because kills are going to be, you know, not is, uh, high noon isn't as good as other ultimates, but it's still an ult that, ultimate that you can get picks with, right? Um, now we, we only saw one of them. And that's not a ton to go off of. Um, so I didn't even know that that was something that we needed to talk about a ton um, because I didn't see a lot of them. But we you know, definitely want to make sure you're going for kills off of them. Big way that you can do that is by going for off angles, right? Because off angles will get you around shields so you're not just shooting at shields and tanks. And it will get you in the situations where they're not expecting, give you a surprise advantage. Um, flanks is also something you can do with high noons. I would just only recommend going for flanks if it's in between fights and it's a safe flank, right? So that kind of explained yep. it yep. a little bit better. So, um, yeah. yeah. Any other questions? No. Basically, my main takeaway is I need to work on aiming at head level when, you know, I'm playing on, like, McCree and stuff like that. Widowmaker, I basically have the head level down, but just other characters need to make sure I'm having that aim uh, head level. And then stop peeking the same places. I mean, I try to I try to get creative and stuff like that. So I'll like watch other people play, um, like Widowmaker or other characters that I'm trying to learn, and I'll be like, okay, where are they positioned? So I try to get creative yeah. with it, and I try to think about where is, uh, I guess you know, a brain dead uh, Widowmaker gonna go. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, someone that's been stuck in, like, let's say, gold for the past 10 years or something. And that's exactly what you want to be doing. When you're in that sniper 1v1, you want to be the one being unpredictable, and you want to assume that they're going to be predictable, right? And it, if they're going to be predictable, you want to aim where you know everybody, or you want to aim where you know everyone else is going to be. And if they if they seem to be unpredictable, like let's say they're doing the same stuff as you, then you're gonna aim in the unpredictable spot, right? Now it's kind of the mind games, right? If they if they are going constantly in the unpredictable spot, go okay, this is the predictable spot. Where would I go if I'm trying to be unpredictable, right? And you kind of think about it like that, right? But most of the time, people will be the predictable type, right? And they'll just be doing that that top, for example, the top right positioning, where right? we're coming out the exact same way everybody else comes out, and then that means that it'll be very easy to catch them out. Right? You just want to watch for that. All right. Okay. So, yep. um, yep. I'm going to end the recording there.